once just for healthcare workers, face masks are now a part of everyday attire. But initially, they were not easy to come by. So one local woman, Ha Ani Hogan, tells me she found a way to put her sewing skills to use and do her part. Honestly, if you talked to like 19-year-old me and if you told her that like one day your sewing skills could actually help save people's lives, like she would have like laughed at you. As soon as the coronavirus pandemic came to Orlando, Ha Ani Hogan knew she had to help. Everyone tries to find a purpose or be altruistic in, in times of crisis. So when her friend and professional Taylor reached out to help create face masks, she grabbed her sewing machine and answered the call. We wanted to be ahead of the curve. We knew that face masks were going to be needed. And just like that, Ha'ani, along with more than 200 others, created Orlando Face Mask Strong. We all had different roles. It's a massive production. A production of all volunteers that created and delivered over 20,000 masks in a few short months. Like uh, Maker FX was one of our big ones. They used their laser cutters to cut massive numbers of uh, face masks. Drivers would drop it off to the sewers, we would sew it, and then they would pick it up and take it places. Places that needed it most, like our three area hospitals, Nemours, Orlando Health, and Advent Health. We were exhausted, like everyone was so tired. We all have our normal jobs, but then we would know we have to make 100 masks by the end of the week and get those out to hospitals. The most time consuming and expensive type of mask was this one, made up of medical grade fabric and metal, used to withstand the hours of wear and sanitizing. It's not perfect, but it's better than poor doctors and nurses having to wear the exact same mask for 10 days straight, right? That's like, it's awful. <laughs> For months, Ha'ani kept threading the needle, working long hours. But the emails we would receive from nurses or um, senior homes, uh, that they were just like, we need these masks. So it just helped kind of, you know, relight our flame. Her unwavering commitment to her community is why she's being honored as one of our everyday heroes. And I'm still having a hard time with the title of like <laughs> local hero, because to me that's like, it's, it's so weird. Yeah. It's so weird to think that way. It was addicting to be a part of because everyone was just like, how can I help? Her most proud moment came as Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer requested an official City of Orlando face covering for his press conference. So he wore it as like his official statement of being like, we all need to be protecting each other let's wear these masks. And so it was like, ha, I made something that Mayor Dyer's wearing. And even three months later, Ha'ani is still getting results, one mask at a time. Knowing that being creative can actually help people was, uh, you know, really special. Now, the Facebook group Orlando Face Mask Strong has more than 1,000 members. If you'd like to join the effort or even donate, we put all that information on clickorlando.com slash city of heroes. I mean, they did the face masks mm -hmm. for um, Orange County Sheriff's Office. They basically said, hey, we have all these reusable bags that we give out at events. We're not having an event. We're not giving them out. So can you transform these into masks? And they, and they said yes. So, I mean, they just worked so hard for so long. And they're still, you know... The, the demand isn't as high right now because there's so many available face masks now, but they're still, still doing it. So if you need a mask or you'd like to donate, they have a GoFundMe there all on the website. Really great work. Mm -hmm. And this Saturday, as the nation celebrates America the beautiful, we're continuing to honor some of Central Florida's heroes in our City of Heroes, a 4th of July celebration special. Don't miss that. Make sure you set your DVR, too. We've partnered with the City of Orlando to bring you a special encore presentation of fireworks at the Fountain as well. So that all begins Saturday night at 8 o'clock right here on News 6, and you'll see more great stories like that one with Ha'ani. Yeah. yeah, and the great thing about watching the fireworks on TV, it will be the first year that we don't have to be tracking the rain. I know we're always all out there mm -hmm. worrying about those storms coming for fireworks time. You'll be oh, keeping yeah. cool. Yeah, we time. will be keeping cool, that's for sure. <laughs>